Good morning, Mr. Speaker. In March of 2006, then Senator Obama was on the Senate floor, and this is what he said. Quote, the fact that we are here today to debate raising America's debt limit is a sign of leadership failure. Increasing America's debt weakens us domestically and internationally. Leadership means the buck stops here. Instead, Washington is shifting the burden of bad choices today onto the backs of our children and grandchildren. America has a debt problem and a failure of leadership, and America deserves better." End quote. But now, Mr. Speaker, a few, a few short years later, President Obama now takes the opposite approach, calling for an increase in the debt limit and threatening doom otherwise. President Obama has failed to send to Congress a budget that would realistically solve our nation's financial problems. He calls for plans that spend too much and borrows too much and taxes too much. When Congress reasonably rejected his plan and proposed a budget with responsible cuts, he turned to political rhetoric rather than meaningful discussions. So at a time when our nation must address a fiscal crisis, our president has offered no real solution and has politicized the issue. What we have today more than ever before is a sign of leadership failure. Back to his original speech when he was a senator. America deserves better. So today with the debt ceiling already 5.3 trillion higher, higher than the level President Obama objected to raising five years ago, he now asks us to raise it again for the 81st time since 1940. We all know this famous quote that defines insanity as doing the same thing over and over again expecting different results. If we actually want to solve today's problem, we must depart from the insane 70-year tradition of just continuing to spend. If we do not delve into the real spending problems today, we will have this same debate a year later, three, five, ten years later from now, and will again be urged to raise the debt limit or face a financial catastrophe. The United States government already owes more than $14 trillion. Less talked about is the federal government faces another $114 trillion in unfunded liabilities for Social Security and for Medicare. An estimate by the Congressional Budget Office reveals that by the year 2025, the government will spend 100% of every dollar in revenue on entitlements. And federal debt aside, state and local governments face a combined $3 trillion, coupled with their own unfunded liabilities in the forms of pensions. Forcing the government to live within its means is the only solution. Just as a family household does it when it reaches its spending limits, we must begin to closely scrutinize our bills and decide where there is unnecessary waste. When families seek to decrease their utility bills, they remember to turn off lights when they leave a room. We must begin doing this as well. Wasteful, fraudulent programs must be turned off, and long-term programs such as Medicare and Social Security must be addressed seriously today. Debt must be paid down instead of piled on. Although the President, the Senate Leader, the U.S. Secretary of the Treasury believe the worst thing that could happen to all of us is that we default on August 2nd, I believe that the worst thing that could happen for Congress to do is to fail to couple the increased debt limit without meaningful spending cuts. Once again, the private sector has affirmed this. On June 1, 2011, 150 economists called for immediate spending cuts to help support job growth in a letter to Speaker John Boehner, which I would like to request unanimous consent, Mr. Speaker, to have placed in the record. But objection. The letter specifically says, quote, an increase in the national debt limit that is not accompanied by significant spending cuts and budget reforms to address our government's spending addiction will harm private sector jobs creation in America. It is critical that any debt limit legislation enacted by Congress include spending cuts and reforms that are greater than the accompanying increase in debt authority being granted to the president. If there's ever been a failure of leadership, it is today we're broke and the solution lies in reform rather than rhetoric, spending cuts rather than spending increases. 
Leadership has called for compromise in the next couple of weeks. A compromise does not involve a vote on raising the debt ceiling without these spending cuts. We demonstrated that on March and May 31st, when 97 to 318, the House rejected this measure. No Republican supported the vote then, and no Republican should support such a vote in August. Only after we curb the trillions of dollars of debt that we continue to pile up can we consider raising the debt limit. 